Mrs. Speaker, thank you for your opportunity to lend my voice to the, the debate on the presentation by the Honorable Dr. Ashley Singh on Budget 2013. Mr. Speaker, I recoiled when I heard members of the other side speak of dreams. More so what they termed the Guyana dream. For my own part, my favorite poet is William Butler Yeats, who wrote to put another support for my manuscript, my father's child, my mother's self. His poem, He Wishes for the Cause of Heaven, is very short, and I read it in entirety. Had I the heavens embroidered cloths, then wrought with golden and silver light, the blue and the dim and the dark cloths of light and night and half light. I would spread my cloths under your feet, but I being poor have only my dreams. I have spread my dreams under your feet. Tread softly because you tread on my dreams. Those, those immortal words, but I being poor have only my dreams, are a testament to the life and times of our heroes, Shelly Jagan and an informed Samson Burnham, who from poor and humble beginnings in Port Marat and Kitty, respectively sprang forth and became Caribbean giants with an indescribable and indomitable will to better the lot of the poor and to alleviate their plight and suffering in a cruel and uneven world. When the Honorable Minister of Finance regales us with strides, made in the judicial sector, he neglects whether deliberately or capriciously, to provide a barometer as to how we have come, how far we have come based on the justice sector reform strategy, which was for 2006 to 2010. Indeed, the key indicators are adequate road safety statistics, a report of the number of police fatal shootings, number of serious crimes reported, the percentage of crimes against women, etc., number of cases prosecuted as a pro proportion of cases reported, case clear up rate, proportion of successful police and DVP prosecutions, proportion of prisoners on remand, proportion of high court and magistrate court cases, including preliminary inquiries, a backlog of court of appeal case cases. Average numbers of adjournments for more than one day of magistrates and high court cases. Proportion of high court and magistrates court cases referred to ADR, which is our term dispute resolution. Time taken for cost assessments in civil cases. Level of prison overcrowding. Prisoners' deaths and illness rates. Level of client satisfaction and performance of the Attorney General's chambers in respect of legal advice and representation provided. I must also posit that the aims of the strategy are fivefold, encompassing community safety, which deals with the safety and security of people and property, the criminal justice, reporting, investigation, prosecution, court processing, and sentencing of criminal justice cases, civil justice, administrative justice, which is ensuring lawful exercise of their powers by public bodies. Penal system providing punishment, deterrent, and rehabilitation, which is the aim is to provide a more humane and cost-effective penal system. Government legal services providing legal advice and representation to government departments. The aim is to provide timely, high-quality advice, representation, and legal services by the Attorney General's Chambers to other government departments. These are the aims and strategies, the budget in totality when speaking of our justice sector should have focused on. But if we slide out of the people's rabbit hole, the majority of goals set have not been achieved. And we have had seven years already to implement a five-year plan. The Justice Improvement Program has failed to deliver in key areas holistic improvements. Upgrading capacity building of staff, juvenile justice programs, comparative remuneration, training, and provision of legal aids to members of both bench and bar, 
access to records and data registries and sub-registries and judgments of judges and magistrates. The intertwining of non-profit and non-governmental organizations with our criminal justice programs. Citizen participation and transparency in the judiciary. The administration has failed to promote public oversight and awareness of the little reforms taking place. There is a marked absence of an infrastructure that protects the victims of crime. There's a marked absence of a second chance policy that caters for post-release employability of adults and juveniles. I want to call a spade a spade and say that the honor minister of finance was bluffing when he says at page 48 of his budget speech that more judges, better trained police prosecutors, increased capacity and expansion of the office of the DBP into the administrative regions and better source magisterial districts all have the potential of significantly improving the functioning of the criminal justice system in 2013. This statement, this statement is all hype but no substance. I dare the young minister to deny that it is the aim of the justice set reform strategy and the modernization of justice administration project to phase out police prosecutions, among other things, to improve efficiency and competence in the criminal justice system. Clearly showing that the Honourable Minister recognizes some of the potentialities, but has he put adequate measures in place to realize those, those potentialities? I dare say he hasn't. Judges and magistrates are still writing their fingers off. They are still without research assistance, yet we expect our judges and magistrates to dream. The equipment needed for voice compilation rests in a dusty room, but the judges and magistrates must dream. We are a long way off from the full and desired complement of judges and magistrates to service the sector, yet we expect the Guyanese population to dream. Dreams won't fix our problems. Executing a vision will. Where well, does this administration find the goal to dare the young people of the judicial sector to dream? Where well, does this administration find the gumption to voice upon us in 2013 what it calls a Guyana dream? When out of 302 staff in the judiciary, only one person is a trained attorney at law. Further, in response to the question I posed to the Honorable Attorney General in the appointment of a registrar of the Supreme Court acting, he stated that the Deputy Registrar acting was promoted to the post of Registrar of the Supreme Court acting. He stated that the Deputy Registrar acting satisfied the job description requirements but she was then demoted to the post of deputy registrar, then transferred to the Burby sub registry. The person who superseded her, the other minister states, does not meet the standards required by the job description prepared and produced by the public service ministry. Additionally, not only is he not a qualified attorney, but was at the time Prior to her demotion, he was reporting to her. Is this how we treat our women? Is this how we treat our young people, our young professionals? I must make this point lest I be misconstrued. I have absolutely no objections to persons who are retired being brought out of retirement to train, quit, work, and pass on their knowledge to the next generation. I have, all, however, every objection when instead of training and equipping the next generation, we stifle and frustrate. The current rest registrar, in my estimation, is as competent as they come. And a gem of an individual. However, he should have been used to guide and nurture the young professional the sector to take over the reins. That our men and women, Mr. Speaker, are locked to wear for 72 hours spending investigations for which no allegations made against them is no dream. That most of our courts are crammed stale and sudden noise nuisances is no dream. 
There is a high incidence of police brutality in cases of shooting deaths of Damien Belgrave, Shakir Grant, among others. The beating of minors at Marudi, the residents of Melanie, the rays of Tiger Bay, Agricola, Sophia, and Buxton, that is no dream. That we have no ombudsman to check the excesses of our, of, of our administrative bodies, even though last year we went through this, is no dream. What has escaped the Alice in Wonderlands on the other side is the fact that the greatest proportion of our Guyanese population live in squalor and poverty. It has escaped. It has escaped some fly by night dreamers that Guyana ranks only above Haiti in every earth soil, a single category. The net migration for Guyana 2012 was 12.78 migrations per 1,000 persons. Net migration for Suriname in 2012 was 0.96 migrations per 1,000 persons. The net migration for Trinidad and Tobago in 2012 was 6.76 migrations per 1,000 persons. The unemployment rate for Guyana in 2012 was 11%. In Suriname, it was 9.5%. In Trinidad and Tobago, it was 5.5%. The GDP per capita in 2012 for Guyana was $3,000. As US dollars per year. In Suriname, 7,100 US dollars per year. In Trinidad and Tobago, 18,000. US dollars per year. How do we expect our young people to resist the lure of better wages and the good life of greener pastures? I dare say this is the Ghana dream to the Honorable Minister of Ali. The Ghana dream is to get the education you need, then leave. That is the Ghana dream. Mr. Speaker, I may offer the Honorable Home Affairs some free Sunday school lessons being the son of a pastor. The prophet Joel, at chapter 2, verse 28 says, Old men, old men shall dream dreams. Young men shall see visions. That this young Honorable Minister is still dreaming is testament to the backwardness that is symbolic of this new visit. We don't need wishy-washy, watered-down pipe dreams. We need comprehensive vision for a country that engages and benefits every single one, woman, man, girl, and boy. There can be no greater investment on this administration than the visible widening divide between the haves and have-nots. We have moved from a decade of politics of socialism to politics of democratic socialism, to politics of functional democracy, to found the politics of dysfunctional democracy, now to the politics of impoverishment. <laughs> Access to information, health, education, and justice are easy for some, but impossible for others. We're not painting a grim and gloomy picture, with Mr. Speaker. These are the realities we hear and realities we face in our constituencies. Maybe they're not in your constituencies, but they're in ours. Gail appears more divided now than ever. And budget 2013 contributes little to bridge this gaping tear in our social economic fabric of our society. I do applaud, by the way, the measures taken to bring relief to the middle class, but we must never forget the poor. I agree that we can overcome whatever challenges we face only by together. And in so doing, we will accelerate the gains for our country. With this, I do commend the Minister of Finance and the staff for the budget and the work they're doing. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.